heading back out here. It's another day. I put this cap on it just to keep it covered up, but this is the cover that these lines feed into. Can't remember what the video says, but I basically got a nice curve that comes back and goes right back into these guys here. I'm gonna go ahead and get these, cut the insulation probably. I mean, I figure they should go in right about there, but I'm gonna give myself an extra, little extra insulation to push back into the wall and maybe be able to pull back up there on those connections up there. If not, at least it'll be enough to where it'll push onto these. Um, so let me uh, set the tripod up and go ahead and cut this insulation and we'll uh, get the pipe cut and then put flares on. Take this deburr tool. Make sure it's pointed down. It's got a little point in there. It kind of just gets rid of any little burrs inside of it. Pretty clean now, I guess. All right, one thing I didn't bring was my fire tool. I don't think the outside needs to be fire. You know, put it on there. Just to do hanging, hanging chads, as they say. See the burners and windows. Yeah, looks pretty clean. Alright, let me go get the uh flare tool. Got that. I'm gonna take and put a this is the one I cut off of. I'm just gonna wrap it with some tape to close this off in case I end up having to come back and use it and I find that I crimped the hose or something. For the tube. Right, I'm gonna take this back so that it stays out of my way. Getting this electrical tape off here might be a problem, but hopefully that's far enough back. And then I'll hold it. Alright, and this is the uh, flare tool. It's a yellow jacket brand. It was off Amazon and uh, actually it was, uh, I guess it was a return. I mean, it worked just as well. I think I forgot what I paid for it. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but it's an eccentric one. I don't know if you can tell if you look at that cone in there. You can see it as I turn this. It, it moves around. Supposedly that's better for flaring. But uh, let's see here. This guy go. I think this is the I think this is the three eighths line. Uh, I think they say you want it flush or just a little proud. So that's Oh, you know what I did forget? 
I do need a flare nut. Not ready to make the, the mistake everybody does make. So I need to actually pull this um, piece I cut off and get the flare nut off of it. Alright, we'll put the uh, nut on this time. I think I'm gonna have to. So that goes to the toward the end, and this is a three eighths, I believe. Yeah, bites on that pretty good. Move it down to the just proud of the end. We'll see. We'll find out that it's too long, and I have to uh, redo it. All right, so there's a dimples. Of course, they're on the other other side of this. There's various dimples that you have to lock this into. Should be do this. Now, let me spin it around so you can actually see what's going on. All right, so these these dimples. All right, three eighths. Some say flush, some say just proud of it. I'm gonna go just proud of it and see where see where I land. Alright. And some say throw a little bit of uh, that mallock lube on there. If I don't get a good result this time, I'll see I'm gonna have to get that nut out of there. Alright, let me regroup and I'm just leaving all this extra on here. Kind of bites me in the butt now. Alright, uh, yeah, it's biting into the tube a little bit. So hopefully that doesn't cause a leak. Alright. Three eighths. Push it to where it's just proud. Gotta make sure this is on the side with these dimples because it'll lock into those. It kind of centers as it gets close to that. And just make sure you're I think I'm I think I'm in there. Yeah, it's center of that. Yeah, so it's and then we'll crank on this pretty good. Make sure it gets a good bite. Look in there and make sure the tube is still proud of the. All right. Wait, how long we got here? But all right, now we just spin this guy. Basically, crank this guy until it clicks. I will say this is a lot smoother than the other brake line set I got. See, it just snap. Yeah, see, it don't and it doesn't do anymore. So it's basically done at that point. And then you just have to back this out all the way. Make sure it'll clear those little dentions. And you take this and pop it loose with it. That comes off and then we it did bite pretty hard on that pipe there, but it's, it's a little rough around the edges though still. Hmm. Guess I didn't clean it off as good as I could have. Flare looks. I can get you to focus. 
looks pretty good. I'll, uh, it's a little rough on the back side here. So I don't know if that's me making it too long, too proud. But I think that'll be fine. And it it does feel the so having a little proud there it does. I don't know if you can see that where it actually fills the the nut so it's basically using the, the full contact surface all right so what we're going to do is just temporarily bolt it on here so we cut the other one see if this is actually we'll come back and put some uh, nylog on this and actually torque it down I don't think I showed you the, the torque wrench I had. Basically with uh, crow, as they call them, crow feet wrenches. And you put them on a regular torque, torque wrench. And you're able to torque these down. I think that's pretty square. We'll, we'll put, leave that on there for now and just and, uh, and pull some slack of this out so it's out of the way. I'll feed that back in. All right. Now let's do the same thing for this one. Hopefully that, that's not a kink right there. I guess we'll find out here a little bit. Try and get it where it's parallel or perpendicular to this to this valve here. So when we do go cut it. Alright, I'm not gonna be so crazy with this insulation this time. Let's cut it right there. There we go. All right. Pull some of that back out. So I'm saying probably about right there. It's probably pretty good. The bugs are terrible out here right now. I'm not sure which way you're supposed to go with this. Where you're supposed to spin it, but and do a, a rotation or two, and then tighten up your little wheel slightly. I think that's through. There we go. Alright, we're going to have to take this off. Get the nut. burr tool was probably almost too big for this this one I will spend a little time because it was I don't know if it was I will do the outside on this one because it was a little rough around the outside edge on the bigger one Inside just one more time. All right, I think it's 
still almost could use a flat file against the edge here. Let me uh, I'm gonna get a flat file and file that edge there. Hang on one sec. All right, I'm just gonna barely touch it with this file. This file is kind of dirty, but. stay square with it but just wanted to get the yeah it feels much better look like I'm putting the trash in there I will hit it with this again just to make sure and hit the outside just one more time yes yeah, so that feels a lot smoother now all right don't forget to put the, the nut on. Done some brake lines and forget the, forgot to put the nut on. And you know what happens there. Especially when you cut it too length. Not too bad. Well, that's far enough. This way. There we go. Maybe that'll do it. Maybe it'll keep it from long enough. For me. All right, nuts. Nuts on there underneath of it. As I remember. All right. Let's see if we can find. Uh, all right. That was three eighths. So I'm thinking this is going to be quarter inch. Let's see. That looks like about it. Oh, got the wrong way though. All right. Let's spin. Spin it this way, I guess. I think they have a metric version of this too, so I'm not sure. I'm gonna stay just slightly proud. Maybe a sixteenth of an inch, if that. It does bite pretty good on the that might be too much, but I don't know if you can see that or not, but, but anyway, all right, that spit down there pretty good, and another, so we're looking for a black one of these, and it's not there, all right, let's make sure we keep that squeezed together, and get it there. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's down in there. Make sure it's in the center one. And then make sure it's still slightly proud. And then we spin it around. Preferably with nothing in our way. like a torque wrench. That roughness too might be because I'm leaving it too proud. It maybe need to be flush. I might try and reflare. Oh, there goes that tool. Right. I might take, see it didn't bite in that it's bad. Pretty good. Looks just like the other one. That fills the basically the nut up. Alright, we need our 
pliers to loosen this up. Go the right way. I always when it's upside down or backwards, I always have problems. What's which way's left, which way's right. So if we kind of get a sense of this going straight in, kind of maybe get you to see that you know, it's not setting flat on there. Kind of little bend it down so it so it kind of sits flat. I mean, a nut will pull pull it somewhat, but you want to go in as square as possible and kind of. Wiggle it a little bit to get the seat. All right, I think that looks good. I'm gonna pull this so it's actually off of the unit a little bit. And I'll uh, probably gonna take and this will probably get shoved back in the wall. This will come. Yeah, actually, it's gonna have to come. It's just gonna be on the outside and then come in. Probably right in here, and we'll shut that back in the wall. I'm gonna take and zip tie that to either the top of there, make sure it's got, and then maybe to the bottom of that, just so that this drips out the condensate. Condensate, uh, but we're gonna leave, let it hang for now. All right, let me uh, get my nylon. Alright. Can you complain with that? That's not the angle the angle I was going shooting for was the hole should have been well, you can't see that, but you know, I was originally aiming for for that, but I decided to raise the unit up to get a little more ground clearance. So it is what it is at this point. I'm not gonna drill another hole. So, all right. So let me uh, get my nylock and pull these off and put some of that on there. Try not to get any on the threads. I can't find my crow grit, the larger one, so probably gonna have to come back to, to that to torque it down. Probably way too much. I'll rub it out with my fingers here. And then on my pants. Alright. I'll go with that. Alright, we'll see how straight it lines up. Oh yeah, that's pretty. Pretty good right there. Alright, that's finger tight. We'll come back with a wrench and get her on there. I 
that's probably way too much. I don't claim to be a professional. I just no, don't have any fear of screwing crap up. That's why I, I, I ain't nothing my finger to do anything like that. But I already put some on here. I did already put some on here. My finger, my fat finger to eat. Good enough to uh, use this to smear it around. Alright, I think we'll get there. Right, I'll get that on there. So she looks pretty square. so tight I'm not really I'm just kind of just barely tightening what I need to do is um, I need to get the wrench for this one and I need a better crescent wrench it looks like I just want to get these just just tight I gotta find out what the torque specs are on both of these. And you should really have another wrench on the on really put a wrench on this part and you crank down so you can kind of get some back pressure to it. wrench on them a little bit. You gotta go find the torque specs. And uh, then we'll button this bad boy up. I gotta get a vacuum and put on it, but that's the gist of it. That screw's gotta come out for this to go in there. I was just wondering, I guess that's the way I'm gonna do that. And so I'll push that in there like so. Maybe just yeah, zip tie that and wrap it. There, there's a wrap you can wrap this all with. I'll wrap that up. And that's what it'll look like. Done. Alright. Leave that there. I'll find the torque wrench. And then we'll start the vacuuming procedure. Alright, back in a bit. Alright, was I supposed to open this? <laughs> oh well. I need to get the torque spec, so. I guess that's the only way I'm going to find that out. Oh well. The torque specs. So a quarter inch. Maybe somewhere between. On this one, I think it's in pounds or inches. Let's see. Yeah, foot pounds. Would be between 24 to 27. And then the 3 eighths would be 40 to 47. All right, we'll go crank on those and see what we get. <coughs> I didn't spring for one of those uh, fancy torque wrenches that basically have one of these adjustable wrenches on the end of it. Um, so I went to the next best thing and bought me some crow feet wrenches. Um, I, granted, they say you have to, I mean, if you added it and put it in, I guess, this orientation, you'd end up actually reduce. Uh, you know, you've created a a longer wrench from here to here. That's how they calculate or calibrate these wrenches. So you reduce it. I mean, granted, the Pythagorean theorem says that you know a triangle, this hypotenuse here, from center here to here is going to be longer. So I don't know if you can tell. I'm, just slightly 
cracked it back. So maybe we've got a, a right triangle here if you set it up like that, but it's close. But so we're gonna set this, to, this is for the smaller line, 17 millimeter, the quarter inch. So we need about, so somewhere around 25, I think we'll be good. All right. And then also, I think it's, you, you, you actually crank down on it to get the click at a lower, you know, somewhere on the lower range back it off and then retighten it um, you know a second time a little bit tighter but still within the uh, this torque spec all right let me go out there and get her done all right i didn't bring the tripod out here but this is the setup here on the smaller line i just want to show you and let's see if i can i don't know if this is going to work probably need two hands on it to keep it from spinning off Oh, there you go. All 